Today was a very exciting day. We received a delegation that was led by uh, James Cameron to Tehawanga, which is the Arara uh, indigenous people who live on the Volta Grande of the Shingu River, the big bend of the Shingu River, that are, that are imperiled by this project, Belo Monte Dam. The delegation came here to learn about what Belo Monchi means for these people, what it means for their lives, their way of life, not just indigenous people, but riverine people, fishermen, small farmers in the region who are all in presence today. I'm honored to be back here in this village amongst uh, our friends after a, after a year away. We're happy to be here. about this very important issue to protect your land and to protect your, your, your river and this area. E estamos aqui resistindo a esse empreendimento de barragem. Porque são projeto de destruição dos nossos povos. Por isso nós não aceitamos empreendimento de barragem no nosso rio. Vocês puderam visualizar essa beleza do nosso Xingu. Essa é a nossa casa. O Xingu é a nossa vida. Nós não podemos deixar que o Xingu morra. Porque... O rio para nós faz parte da nossa vida. Então por isso nós não queremos deixar acabar. E tanto para nós faz parte da nossa vida como acho que para vocês lá fora faz também. Porque se acabar a, a floresta vai acabar o oxigênio de vocês lá fora. Né? Da defesa dos povos da Amazônia, da defesa dos povos do Xingu, da defesa do nosso majestoso rio Xingu, vamos gritar com muita força e fé. Xingu vivo! Para sempre! Então, isso aqui é um, pouco, é um mapa da bacia do Xingu, né? Eu queria só introduzir, isso é um palco de Belo Monte hoje, né? São 31 terras indígenas, são 25 povos indígenas, são 15 unidades de conservação. Quer dizer, é claramente uma área que é de alta prioridade para a conservação da biodiversidade e da sociodiversidade. Né? O rio Xingu é um rio dos índios. Right now, the, the Brazilian government is proposing a dam complex that will divert 80% of the river's flow into artificial canals and uh, to the dam's powerhouse, leaving what's known as the Volta Grande, the big bend of the Xingu, with only a 20% or less of its natural flow, essentially destroying the swath of the river upon which thousands of farmers, riverine peoples, and indigenous peoples whose territories are based there uh, rely. <laughs> And you can do it with the solar panels because Brazil is the biggest deposit of the most of silica in the world. What one needs to do really is to have other sources of energy and to use less energy. Uh, hydroelectric dams are always, or almost always, presented as green energy. It doesn't have any impact on global warming. And people have heard that so many times that they believe it, and they've never heard any of the other information. But unfortunately, dams also emit 
uh, greenhouse gases, especially methane. Methane is much more powerful than carbon dioxide in uh, provoking global warming. They learned about the energy matrix in Brazil, the implications of Brazilian energy planning for the Amazon, the fact that these giant dams that are being planned for the Amazon's rivers represent also a, a grave threat to our climate, and took away a message. I think that, in particular, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who had never been to the Amazon, was quite impressed by the speakers and had a, a lot to say in, in return uh, with, with his perspective his experience as the governor of California. How do we move forward in the world in the best possible way? Uh, with a green energy, with a good energy future, how do we get off fossil fuels, how do we go into green energy future, and how do we all come together as people? We also met with, uh, with various citizen groups and experts and so on in uh, Altamira to listen to the impact that, that, that would have on that, uh, on that city, upriver of the dam. And we toured the areas uh, downriver of the dam sites to see especially the, uh, the Big Bend area, which would, which would suffer from a significant drop in water. Uh, and I was uh, you know, briefed by experts like uh, Philip Fernside and, and others uh, in various organizations about the, uh, the short and long-term impacts of the dam and of the, uh, the issues surrounding the dam in terms of its, its financing, its efficiency, its effectiveness, and so on. And, and my personal conclusion is that this is a very ill-conceived project that will have very, very uh, profound ramifications in its area. And that the biggest, the biggest issue is that there's not a, a transparency of the, of the process to the public and there's not an inclusiveness uh, or, or a, a democratic process with respect to the people uh, who are directly affected by these, these projects. I know that the biggest controversy here now is over whether green power is always sustainable and always fair to the people who are around it because of the controversy over the dams and the rainforest and the indigenous people who oppose it. I know that this is a real problem. You need more electricity. You need it to be clean. You want to preserve the native cultures, you need to preserve the rainforest. If you reach a critical juncture, you'll change it forever and it can't be recovered. And the rest of the world is dependent on you because about 20% of the world's non-ocean oxygen comes from you. You have to think about these things because you have to think about what Brazil will be like for your children and your grandchildren and whether the world will follow the good things you have already done or walk away from it, in which case everything you're doing could be rendered irrelevant. The whole world needs you to resolve this. Se destruir a Amazônia, o país, o mundo está sendo destruído. Por que, que o governo brasileiro não nos escuta? Por que, que o governo brasileiro não demonstra outras alternativas mais viáveis que desenvolva o país realmente e que não destrua tanto? Porque se você destrói uma natureza, você destrói as pessoas que delas sobrevivem como nós, povos indígenas e populações tradicionais.